Hey everyone, Bill Parrish here from GTT Audio and welcome to the channel today. So we're here on the East Coast just getting pounded by some snow. I'm doing this on Monday, the video drops on Tuesday. And I'm sort of without a topic. So I talked to a good friend over at uh, YG Acoustics, Dick Diamond, and I said, what? I, you know, I've got to drop a video tomorrow, and I don't have uh, I don't have a subject. I'm at a hit sort of a brick wall, and Dick's going through a couple of uh, different comments, and then he says uh, compat system compatibility and synergy, and I'm like, that's it. That's what I'll do. So it'll be a short little video, but hopefully it'll really hit home couple of uh, quick little stories. So uh, my friend Joe Cabala told me back when, I mean he, I think 2004 they came out with their cables, started their company, and for the first three or four years I think he traveled everywhere. I mean he was, he lived on the road traveling and you can put the cable in, you know, he'd put cables in and always encouraged everyone to put the whole system of cables in because if you're really going to do a true a b of uh, of a component versus a component and cables are a component you need to swap them all otherwise if you just take say one cable and stick it in between the transport and the uh and the deck i mean back then there was transports right so you know it's a, you're not really hearing how that cable how that in this case, Kabbalah Sosna cable sounds, what you're hearing, even though everyone would say, oh yeah, and they would describe the sound, that's not what you heard. You did not hear the sound of that cable. What you heard was the sound of that cable with the existing cables that are in the system. Does that make sense? Because that's, that's what it is. I mean, that's really what it is. So Joe was with a, uh, with a dealer, I think somewhere on the west coast, and put a cable in between transport and, uh, or per se, CD player and, and preamp. Dealer said, oh, that sounds bright. Okay. Joe said, would you mind if we put your cable back in there and we moved it between the preamp and the amp? So they did that. And Taylor says, ooh, sounds dark. And Joe said, well, what would you like it to be? And this dealer had this shocked look on his face and said, what do you mean? <laughs> what would I like it to be? And he says, well, you said it was bright. My cable was bright there and my cable's dark here. Clearly it can't be both. So what would you like it to be? <laughs> How about we put the whole loom of Kabbalah Sosna cables in and see how it sounds? They did, and it was perfect. So what he had is he had a when he when he thought the cable sounded bright, he had other he had bright cables in the rest of the system. When he sounded when he he took out some of those bright cables, and then the what he was balancing before was a dark cable. So he, as Harry Pearson used to say had the yin and the yang going on. One was a little dark, one was a little bright. And you know what? You can, you can do that. If you're going to mix and match cables and do it from different brands, you can, you can come up with a fairly neutral system doing it that way. However, when you're doing that, when you're pushing and pulling and pushing and pulling, you always hurt resolution. So you're never going to get to that 100% as if you did everything with the same brand. But I found that interesting, you know, and you got to think about that. And what's made me think about this is in recent months, well, the last year or so, um, you know, we've got three of these Mola Mola Tambaki uh, DACs out with reviewers. We have three that are out with clients uh, for demo at all times. We've got these things moving around. And, uh, I mean, we do it because it works. And we probably got a 90 plus, over a 90% uh, closure rate with that. I mean, people hear this thing and they love it. 
But there's been a couple of guys that have said, well, no, one guy, one guy said that the Tambaki was bright. It's not bright. Not by any means. And then another guy, two other guys said, oh, the Tambaki's a little rolled off. Well, it can't be both, what we just talked about. And so really the question is, what DAC did you have in there beforehand? If you had a dark DAC, then therefore the rest of the system is maybe skewed a little upwards on the bright side. So now you put a neutral DAC in there, and so you don't have that to darken the system, and now you've got the rest of the equipment down line going up, you know, towards that uh, the bright treble, treble-ish side. Well, it's going to sound bright, but it's not the DAC that's bright. Maybe the whole system needs to be looked at, you know. And if that guy has done that with the DAC and the rest of the gear, he's probably done it with the cables as well. You know, it's the same thing if, you know, the, the two fellows that thought that the uh, DAC was maybe a little rolled off. It's because the previous DACs kind of were a little bright, the ones that they were using. And then the other ones, uh, the rest of the equipment was dark, dark and rolled off. So then you put a neutral DAC in there and it doesn't seem to have that sparkle. And that, that's the gist of it, because the Tambaki, and I encourage you to read up on it, it's, uh, I mean, it really is a neutral, um, a neutral deck. The Bruno Putzi's entire design philosophy that's carried over throughout the entire Moa Moa team is to do no harm and not shift from the original signal or source. You know, the, the whole tagline is truth is beauty. This thing's not going to alter the signal. So therefore, if you're getting what's on that disk or on that file, then you're getting neutrality. Now, of course, the file could be bright and the file could be dark. The same file can't be both. <laughs> Which is always an interesting thing, but you know this is uh, this is why reviewers have multiple systems and multiple pieces of equipment, uh, you know, multiple amplifiers, multiple cables, because you know they need to try certain things to get that component to work right at uh, at times, especially if the system isn't dead nuts flat. And then we've talked about before if you've got tweaks in there. And when we're sending Tambakis around, we have no idea what's in your system and what you've done. Um, but that can be changing everything as well. If you're tweaking your system for, say, a you know a popular D to A converter, a DCS. If you're tweaking your system for a DCS, and then you stick a Tambaki in there, well, the system's tweaked for a DCS, not for a Tambaki. So you're hearing a Tambaki with a tweaked DCS system for a system tweaked out for a DCS. And you know, and, or it could be a Berkeley DAC, you know, I'm just, I'm not picking on DCS, it's just probably one of the most popular, super, you know, uber high-end DACs out there, and it's a DAC that uh, we love to go against. You know, um, it could be PS Audio, it could be Berkeley, it could be Nagra, MSB, uh, I don't care. And another thing, you know, if you've done some things to, uh, to your system, um, and again, I'm not there, so I don't know if it's extreme or not, but, uh, you know, to, to fit a certain component, maybe it's not right for the component that you're trying. Great example. Happened this past weekend. Fellas trying one. Loves everything about it, but says the sound is forward. And it's not very deep. I mean, here's the... The layering, but it's not deep. His existing D to A converter is much deeper. And you know, I've been, I, the, we're in our 27th year now, and I, I gotta say, I must admit, I was scratching my head. 
because I mean this thing you come here and you demo we have three DAX on display here it's like everything's in threes three on display here three at reviewers three at clients uh, going around but that DAC I mean that sound stage is through the wall I mean it's taking place on the street in every system I mean it just completely removes that uh, that that front wall behind the speakers and it's just this open space of layers in an orchestra or jazz club or whatever it is so how could this deck be flat at this client's house I just hadn't heard it before well Thank God for him and him trying some things because he knows his system. I don't know his system. I got an email. He, oh, he, he, he got rid of some of the toe in the speakers, opened the speakers up some, and oh my God, it's got huge depth, huge width, huge sound stage sight, you know, giving the wire information, he's sending the money. And these, these are great emails. But these are also things that I don't read and forget about, I learn from. This is interesting. I mean, really what I should be doing is requiring a, a photo of your system to before you demo the components. But we're not gonna get that invasive. But we know a few things. You know, we like to get feedback. We like to add things to, you know, to the database. So, so we know. And so we can help steer you, and coach you, lead you down a path if you'd like us to be your guide. Well, I promised it would be short, and it is. We'd like you to subscribe, like, share, comment below, and we'll see you in two weeks.